Keith Haring was born in uh, Reading, Pennsylvania on May 4th, 1958. His father, Alan Haring, uh, was an engineer and amateur cartoonist. This was a big influence on him. Besides that, uh, his other big influences were Walt Disney cartoons, Dr. Seuss, Charles Schultz, the creator of Peanuts, uh, the Looney Tunes cartoon, specifically the Bugs Bunny show. Uh, so very, if you look, you saw his work, you can, you can tell it's a very comical kind of cartoon nature, very, you know, clean lines, very simple, very, um, uh, very graphic. Um, he also went to a Christian school, which is, is an important part of, I think, of, it, of his story. Uh, in his early teenage years, um, Keith Haring was involved in the Jesus movement. Um, later, he hitchhiked across the country while selling t-shirts and postcards that he made featuring uh, the Grateful Dead and these anti-Nixon uh, t-shirts. So kind of like Basquiat, he was just out there kind of roaming the streets. I mean, him cross crossing the country. It was very Bob Dylan-ish, if you will. Um, just selling art and, you know, making money and just making his way around. And, and that kind of was a really good way to like kind of just get your stuff out there. Studied commercial art from 1976 to 1978 at Pittsburgh's Ivy School of uh, Professional Art, but he lost interest. Uh, he was uninspired, and, you know, after reading a book called The Art Spirit, um, which came out in 1923 by uh, Robert Henry, um, had, a, had a really big influence on him and kind of why he left school after two semesters. If you haven't read this book, and if you're at all interested in going into any kind of art world of any kind or anything kind of creative of any kind, I highly recommend this book. Again, it's called The Art Spirit. I'm sure you can find it anywhere. Um, read that book. Um, Herring moved to New York in 1978, and he studied painting at the School of Visual Arts at SVA. Um, Herring received public attention with his graffiti art in the subways uh, when he started creating these white chalk drawings on black, again, kind of using this black space that was used for advertising, you know, spaces. So this is where, like, you know, you put up ad posters in New York uh, in the subways. He considered the subways to be his laboratory, a place where he could experiment and create his own artwork on the free space that was um, um, supposed to be a place for, also obviously, ads. But for him, it was a perfect place to draw. Um, and starting in 1980, um, he organized exhibitions at Club 57, a gallery which hosted performances and exhibitions from emerging artists. And again, I think this is a good combination of music and art coming together as well. Around this time, the Radiant Baby, um, which was a crawling infant, um, emitting rays of light became his most recognized symbol. He used it as his tag uh, to sign his work. Much how, much like how Basquiat had that crown, right? That was Basquiat's kind of signature, I don't know, icon. Uh, the Radiant Baby is um, Keith Haring's. Um, and what is the Radiant Baby? And what, is it, what does it kind of represent? Um, watch this. It's a little long, um, but at least watch the first three minutes of it because it will give you the answer to this question. Um, but the whole video itself is about nine minutes. So if you if if you really want to um, invest the time into Keith Haring and, and want to learn more about it, watch it all. But if not, just watch the first bit and you'll get a lot about kind of the, the radiant baby kind of, you know, symbolism. Okay.